oogliet, vers vir vers, oogliet, drie vers tien, paar slakke, liefdesgeskenkies en ketsingu. Oogliet drie vers tien, die stijle daarvan het ek gemaakt van silver, die lening van goud, die sitplaak van purper, die binnenkant mooi gemaakt, een liefdegave van die dochters van Jerusalem. Dit is nog steeds die mere gelovig is, of die dochters van Jerusalem wat hier praat met die breid, wat beskryf hoe hulle het sien en ervaar, die wonderlijke geskenke wat God nou op hulle neerstoor. Did you know you can create a dye from the secretions of a sea snail? Well, you can. Hey guys, welcome to Little Art Talks. My name is Karen and I'm talking about a specific dye which you can make from a species of predatory sea snails called Mercidae or Mercidae and they were formerly known as Murex snails. Now you might be imagining what kind of color can you get from a snail? I mean, maybe like a brown color? But it turns out you get a very vibrant purple. That's pretty cool if you ask me. The color called Tyrian purple may have been originally made by ancient Phoenicians as early as 1570 BCE. They were an ancient Semitic, the less Socratic civilization that lived in what is now modern Lebanon. Known to the classical Greeks and Romans as the traders in purple, they were most famed for their much sought after, very expensive purple dye, which was often used for royal clothing. The dye is created from a mucus secretion that can be collected from one of several species of medium-sized predatory sea snails found in the eastern Mediterranean Sea, including the spiny dimerex, the banded dimerex, and the rock shell. In solution, the color is blue, but as a dye, the solid state is purple. In nature, this secretion is a mechanism of their predatory behavior, and it's also used as an antimicrobial lining for egg masses. They'll also secrete the substance when attacked, so humans can collect the dye via physical agitation, like poking it. By the way, this is not an animal-friendly dye, so if you're gonna get upset about this, maybe you don't want to listen to the rest of this. A less labor-intensive way of collecting the dye is just crushing them. Yeah. Pliny the Elder described the whole process of creating Tyrian purple, and just very quickly, it's pretty much collecting the snails, removing the vein where the color is located, salting them, putting them in heated vats, and letting it sit. The whole process took about 10 days, and yes, the records do say it smelled really bad. Like, horribly bad. <laughs> David Jacobi remarks that 12,000 snails of Murex banderas yielded no more than 1.4 grams of pure dye, enough to color only the trim of a single garment. That's just ridiculous. 4th century BCE historian Theopompus wrote, Purple for dyes fetched its weight in silver at Colophon in Asian Minor. It was such a status symbol that courts even restricted its use, who can wear it, who can make it, how much you can make, and what you can dye with it. Despite how expensive and labor-intensive it was to create this dye, it was highly prized for the vibrant purple that was impossible to achieve otherwise at the time. It was color fast, which means it didn't fade or weather in the sun, and in fact it became a more vibrant purple. The color itself varied quite a lot, but the most prized variation of Tyrian purple was that of blackish clotted blood. That's certainly a way to describe a color. The production of Murex purple for the Byzantine court ended with the siege of Constantinople in 1204. Jacobi writes, No Byzantine emperor nor any Latin ruler in former Byzantine territories could muster the financial resources required for the pursuit of Murex purple production. While similar dyes and processes continued to exist in Egypt and Mexico, there was no further mention of the color in Western Europe, certainly not in the commercial extent as before, and instead they turned to vermilion, which is a whole nother story in itself. I hope you guys enjoyed this video about Tyrian purple and you learned something new. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my previous videos about the history of different colors. I have Flake White, Mayan Blue, Mummy Brown, Alizarin Crimson, no, 
Lapis Lazuri. I must be thinking about Crimson still. Maybe that'll be my next one. What do you guys think? Thanks so much to our Patreon supporters who support this channel. If you would like to make a contribution, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash littlearttalks. So if you want to make a contribution to this channel and see more videos, um, that is one way to do it. I would certainly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Hier die paar, per per of paars in, was die selfde ink waarmee Lydia van Tia Tiere gewerk het. En sy was die eerste gelovige in Europa, al vir hulle sy handelinge. Dit is nogal sy interessante toevalligheid, alhoewel ek al keer op keer gesien het, dat in die Bijbel is niks toevallig nie. So uit hierdie video uit, is dit net nog een dieper bewijs, dat 1. Ons is royalty. God gaan so groot om te sê, ons sitplank is al sommer daarvan gebakel. God sal nie die beste vir ons wil gee. Dit is so goed, sy vraag vir God vir die ruis gold ring, en hy stier sommer vir jou jylle stoel en een jylle lesenaar gemaak van ruis gold. Dit is so uitermatig hier die sening was van die paars stoel. Die kleer word verkry dier die skulpie of dierkie wat in vrees is en gebreek word. Weer eens is dit een sinspeel dat ons bediening sal waarschijnlijk kom uit ons grootste hartseer. Dit is nog een voorbeeld van beauty for ashes. Iets moet gebreek word om iets moois te kry. Hoe lang vat dit, sê hulle, om een preek te skryf? 10 jaar. Dit vat 10 jaar sy ondervinding, sy traal en een error om waardelijk die antwoord te kry. Hier is my vierde jaar wat ek dier hooglied werk intensief dier hooglied swat en nou nog leer ek nieuwe dinge, soos byvoorbeeld die paar slakke, of eindelijk die volbrein slakke wat paars ink gee. Dit vat 12.000 skulpies om 1,4 gram sy ink te gee. Hoeveel gebeur het, denk jy, vat het om iemand ander sy hart te verander? Weer eens is dit een bewys dat God wil vir ons die beste gee. Ek kan ook daarvan oortuig van oorvloedige geskenke donaties wat instroom hoe nadere mens aan God begin wandel. Net as die dochters van Jerusalem vir hulle een mooi draastoel gemaakt het, so, so ook is dit een natuurlijke vrug van een ware verhouding met God. Mense kan net nie ophou om jou te bederf nie. Dankie en halleluja daarvoor. Gaan kyk gerust my video oor blomme op die trappe. Ek sal die link hieronder sit. Dank met ons gebed word, wees my asjeblief, dat ek ook die liefdesgaves raak sien wat ander mense vir my en my bediening doen. Op die onderwerp van ingeweef en mooi gemaakt met goud, dit het my laat dink aan Kutsuki. In movies or TV, whenever one character says to another character, can't we just go back to the way things used to be. It's usually a sign on the part of the writers that that character has yet to face up either to reality or to themselves. The cliche is offered up as a solution. Some trauma has passed. Parties that were enraged or hurt or mistaken want to forgive or heal or apologize. They want the bad times to give way to good times, but only on the pretense, the false pretense, that the bad times never happen. This is a kind of red herring of reconciliation. We know that trauma can be repressed, but it can't be erased. Lasting reconciliation is achieved by emotional self-awareness, by embracing the change agents of trauma, and how they irreversibly reorganize elements of personality, identity, and social reality. This idea, the idea of embracing our wounds, our brokenness is manifested quite poetically in the Japanese mending practice of kintsugi, literally meaning golden joinery. Kintsugi is the art of fixing broken pottery with lacquer resin dusted or mixed with powdered gold. Asian cultures have a long history in lacquerware, though it matured into a sophisticated art in the Chinese Shang Dynasty. The earliest discovered lacquered object dates to the Neolithic Hamudu culture in the 5th millennium BC. Older than the Earth itself, according to young Earth creationists. Pretty impressive. <laughs>
could be alien. The various delicate arts of lacquerware ramified and expanded down millenniums and cultures. The story of Kintsugi reportedly begins in the 15th century with the Japanese military commander. The story goes that famous shogun Ashikaga Yoshimasa broke one of his prized Chinese tea bowls. So he sent the item back to China for repair. What he got in return was his bowl mended with bulky and ugly metal staples. Dismayed, Yoshimasa prompted Japanese craftsmen to search for a more aesthetic means of repair. The art of Kintsugi became famous for turning broken objects into pieces more beautiful than the original product. There are even rumors of people breaking their own possessions on purpose so that they can be mended using this lovely technique. The philosophy here follows from a broader Japanese aesthetic called wabi-sabi that finds beauty not in traditional Western ideals of symmetry or geometry, but in Buddhist concepts of impermanence and imperfection. The fractures on a ceramic bowl don't represent the end of that object's life, but rather an essential moment in its history. The flaws of its shape aren't hidden from inspection, but emblazoned with golden significance. Maybe Hemingway had Kintsugi on his mind when he wrote that famous line from A Farewell to Arms. The world breaks everyone, and afterward, many are strong in the broken places. The amazing art of Kintsugi, a fading art like so many handcrafts, symbolizes the truth that repair requires transformation, that the pristine is less beautiful than the broken, and that the shape of us is impossible to see until it's fractured, until a wound like a crack runs its length. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Kintsugi is just another example of the profound differences in Western and Eastern aesthetics and thought. There's not too much to read about it online, but every article that I found, I'll put in the description below under Works Cited, and you can check it out there. Um, thank you to everybody who followed me on Twitter following last week's video. Um, that was awesome. Um, if you haven't, please do. Also, your comments on the videos have been amazing, and I'll try to continue to respond to all of them. But if you do want to have a more involved discussion, go to my Tumblr page and use the Ask Me Anything feature, and I'll be able to respond in a sort of deeper, more thoughtful way. And as always, throw this video up on Reddit if you found it interesting. Um, Reddit has been awesome. And I will see you next time. So at work, so God work for us. The rise of the bedienen mooi mok. Juist die ons foute en ons mislukking sal God gebruik om iets mooi en net en wonderlik daar uit te maak. Omdat hierdie artikel vir, was vir Rais, die draasel van so Salomo, laat my nogal dink, dink aan toe Jesus die sy disciples uitgestuur het vir evangelie. Hy het ook baie spesifiek gevelle gesê om niks saam te vat vir die Rais nie. So dalk, as ons uitgaan op bediening, is hierdie type dier en baie besonderse stijl van rondgaan wat ons kan verwacht. Of dalk, nee dalk, is dit wat gebeur as ons ware tempels van God begin word, wanneer ons so woord saamdra met ons dag en nacht, dat ons sal word soos die kostbare draastoel van Salem.